How do you feel about the adjustments you've been able to make since game two and the victory of game Find out. Seven o'clock. Um, you know, the adjustments always are good on uh, in theory. Uh, and then reality, uh, sometimes they're, it's a different animal because they'll make adjustments as well. But, you know, five game series, seven game series, it's a bit of a chess match. Um, you know, they got a really good coaching staff and they did some things in game two different. We did as well. Um, so uh, some of it is how quickly can our players adapt to a few of the adjustments. And then some of it is how will they work against our opponent. That kind of stood out for his physicality in game two. Is Kozak, what can he bring to the lineup tonight? Yeah, Kozak and Warren uh, are two of our most uh, physical players up front, especially. Um, yeah, for a couple of reasons, you know, one is they, they naturally want to play that way. Uh, they're puck hunters. They're good four checkers. They also have the speed uh, to get to spots to be physical. And then the force, because of that speed, to have – uh, those two have impactful hits. Um, when they when they hit people, your opponent knows it. So uh, those guys, uh, they've been critically important to us all season long, but especially the second half of the year. I think the in the playoffs, the play of Warren and Kozak has been really strong. Doing the same lineup. We'll find out. Level, uh, being at home, sold out crowd. It's been sold out. I know you talked about it after the game. Thursday, but now being here the morning of just here at level. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. Um, these are special moments. You want the players to have fun with it. You want them to embrace it. You want them to embrace the urgency of the moment, but you also want them to have fun with it because you've earned these moments. Um, and, you know, you never know when you get them again, right? It's, you talk to a lot of players that have played pro for 10, 12, 15 years, and they've only been to conference finals, you know, one, two, three times maybe in those careers. So, um, we've earned this. You want to embrace it. You want to have fun with it. The crowd's going to be amazing. It's been, uh, it's been really neat uh, just to see the way this city has embraced this team. Uh, you know, being out, I, I was able to go to the PGA on Sunday and the amount of people that stop you and tell you they love what's going on and good luck. And, um, but even around town, if you're going to grab lunch or something like that, the, the city is really buzzing uh, about the Amherst right now. Um, so it'll be, I think it'll be a special atmosphere here tonight. And one of the ones you talked about in previous years was bringing them into the game. Is that something that you could re reiterate again and something you have been successful at doing at home? Yeah, bring them into the fight is, I guess, the way I'd say it. Yeah, and we will talk about that again. And, and there's ways to do that. The hits, scoring chances, block shots, goals, fights. Like, those are the things that excite a crowd the most, right? So... Um, you want to do it early, you want to do it often, you want to pull them in, you know, that was great. We were able to do that in the two Syracuse games that, that kind of uh, flipped our playoff season. Um, but then we were even able to do it in the Toronto game, even though they scored 15 seconds in. And before you knew it, 10 minutes later, we had three on. And, and that's, you really want to bring that to Hershey, you know, they're a veteran team. So, you know, that's not like they're going to be massively intimidated uh, by a crowd, but they haven't played in front of us. Um, they're road, they haven't played many road games in the playoffs, uh, and the ones they've played were in Hershey, I mean, sorry, in uh, Hartford and in Charlotte, and the crowds were okay. And, and so this is going to be another animal, and you just uh, you want to make it as hard of an environment for them with our play and, and by bringing the crowd into the fight. Such a great job that after wins, treating every win the same, it doesn't matter. You turn the page, you say you learn from it, you turn the page, you move on. Is it the same exact mindset after a loss? Did you, you treat after the wins and after the losses exactly the same? Oh, exactly the same, but pretty darn close. Um, you know, maybe the second loss in Syracuse a little different just because I felt the team needed uh, a shift of mindset and, and a in a direction forward um, where I think after this loss, it was more just let's learn. You know, here's, here's what we did well. Here's what we can do better. Here's a couple adjustments that we need to make. Let's learn. Let's apply. Let's be ready uh, for game three. Designed by you? Not designed by me. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a line. I say, I've said it the last two years a lot. Um, after wins that are somehow crazy, um, you know, Providence last year when we had like 
17 of our normal players on the lineup, you know, or, or a crazy, the, the Syracuse game when it's, when you're up 4-2 and it becomes 4-4 and you win 8-5, just come in and, and you start giving ducks to the, the non-dressers and the guys and I just kind of never a doubt, never a doubt. Like it's, we always had it kind of thing. It's, it's a joke. It's also a little bit of a tribute um, to Jim Johansson. Jim Johansson uh, was the executive uh, vice president of USA Hockey. He ran the national teams at USA Hockey. He hired me. Um, he passed away from heart attack a few years ago. And he's just a great man and, and critically important to the success of USA Hockey over the last 25 years. And he is as funny as they come. And that was his line. Um, so we'd be in international tournaments at the 18s, at the men's, whatever it is. And you'd win like a crazy game, like one you shouldn't have won or you found a way. And he just comes down laughing. He had this unbelievable way about him. He had this laugh that was infectious. He'd be like, never a doubt, boys, never a doubt. And so um, that's something I've kind of taken on uh, really in, 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 in homage to him. Seth, you've rarely trailed in uh, the previous seven games during the winning streak, and if so, only by one goal and for a short period of time. Um, how would you gauge the club's response after 40 minutes the other night in trying to dig out of that two-goal hole, and what do you maybe learn from that experience? Yeah, I think that um, the second goal was big. You know, if, if we get out of that second, because we were playing really good, uh, I think we were better in game one than we were in game two. Analytically, it says that we had the better of the scoring chances. Uh, we defended better, uh, but they made a nice play in the power play. And that, that is what it is. And their goalie made a few big saves. I think if we get out one, nothing, the third period is different. Two, nothing allowed them to play much more conservative. Um, so I think we did enough things in the third to get it to two to one, which would have given us a chance. Uh, we had some pretty darn good scoring chances. We, uh, we had a little two on one at the front of the net. Uh, we had a rebound battle in, in, in the in the blue paint. Uh, we hit we hit Sacconi as the four man coming down the slot for for almost a partial breakaway coming down the slot. You know, and and they defended extremely well. Uh, and and Shepard was really good. So um, they're a team, and we did this in game one, and we weren't able to do it in game two. They're, they're not going to give you tons of chances. Uh, this is not a team that just hands out free chances. Uh, Toronto wants to go up and down the sheet with you. This is more like Syracuse, that there's not being free chances handed out. You've got to earn everything you get, and it might only be 24, 25, 30 shots on goal. It might only be 13 to 15 scoring chances, not 18 to 20. So you have to capitalize better on the ones you get. And we created enough. We just didn't capitalize on um, did you use Kulik more in that game than what you have in some of the others, even though he had been scoring consistently in the others? Uh, yeah, I mean, he is ice time. I think he was our top four in ice time um, in that game. Uh, I, I, I really liked his game. I thought he was uh, just okay in game one, uh, made, made a nice play to help set up a goal, though. Uh, but I thought he was engaged right away in game two. Uh, he was hunting pucks. When he's physical... And, and he's not like crazy physical. It's not like he's a Brendan Warren or a Brett Murray. But when he's physically engaged and he's moving his feet and he's hunting pucks and cutting guys' hands off, he's usually, you can see it's coming. Um, and he had some massive scoring chances in that game. You know, the goalie made two or three big saves on him. He missed one on a backdoor play for Murray. Um, so I, I just felt like he had his legs. I thought he was playing really good. And I think the ice time then just went with that. And obviously he's one of our best offensive players and we're down. So you want a guy like him to be on the ice in those moments. And last one, did you see Savoy um, fitting better with any particular line mates throughout the course of that game? Um, I liked him throughout the game. I thought he gave us good energy. I thought he played with pace. I think he made some plays. He didn't back down at all from, from the nasty physicality of the series. So uh, I'm not surprised by any of that. The Western League playoffs are physical too, but but this is this is man's hockey now, and um, I think he got more comfortable as the game went on, and I expect the same tonight. Um, not, I still chemistry is a is a hard thing, and we haven't had enough practices with him to see it in practice. He's been on the ice for about a practice and a half, so. Um, you know, I think it'll still continue to play out. He is going to be on a different line tonight than he was last game. 
because of some things I saw in a few shifts. Um, but what I like is I like them on wing and I like them at center. Um, he had a few shifts at center. I thought he looked very comfortable. He had a majority of his shifts at wing. I thought he looked very comfortable. Uh, that's a real credit for him. Thank you. Sure, you know I lost that thing. What was that, Jordan? I'm all set. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry i well, I mean, yeah, and, and just I, I think more importantly for, you know, for our organization, you know, he's a really talented young prospect and was, was you know, obviously because of the length of time he stayed in college, um, free agency is an option. And, and uh, I think it shows um, what Kevin is doing throughout our organization, uh, that players of that caliber that, that have other options if he waited another month or two and want to be part of our organization right now. You talked about telling your players to enjoy this moment, embrace this moment. Do you have a message to the fans? Because this is probably the biggest hockey in Rochester in 20 years. Do you have any message to them? The only thing, only thing I'd say to them is thank you. Uh, because our fans in the whole second half of the season uh, have made this place a hard place to play. Um, and I know our team has, has been a big part of that as well. But uh, our fans have been awesome. So my message is thank you. Uh, get properly lubricated pregame and uh, come out loud and strong at seven o'clock tonight.